All right, guys, let's take a look at the Detroit Mint Cobra. These are a fully mechanical chronograph with a display case back there. So you can see the Seagull ST19 movement, and we'll do some close-ups on that. They're fun to look at. Super affordable when it comes to a fully mechanical uh, chronograph. That's pretty much the only option is to go with a Seagull movement. So I have two colorways here. I have the black and then I have the white dial one. I actually met up with the brand owner, Dave, down in southeast Michigan on one of my trips down there. And he, um, I didn't grab the sunglasses. He has these uh, pretty cool wood framed, uh, well, wood armed sunglasses too. I'll put a link in the description. You can check it out if you're into like, um, I mean, they're kind of cheap sunglasses really. I mean, even he will say that. Um, you know, even the parts for the watches and everything, you, you know, all the parts basically come from China and everything, but what he does is he specs out all the parts, he brings them in and he has a clean room and, uh, he assembles them. So, and then he regulates them and all that good stuff too. So, uh, it's pretty cool that, uh, somebody again in my home state of Michigan in Southeast Michigan there, he, uh, you know, was running this and this isn't his main job. This is kind of like a working hobby is the watch game and then of course the sunglasses and he's always been into watches that's something he inherited from his dad and everything but enough about the uh the company you can do your own research on that if you want let's get into the watch you're looking at a 40 millimeter case 46 lug to lug you can see that interesting case profile there kind of bowls out and it's 13 and a half millimeter thick you can see it has a boxed uh i don't think it's really domed but it's a boxed sapphire crystal and 20 millimeter lug width, six millimeter crown, non-screw down. It's gonna be a 50 meter water resist, it is signed. And double pushers here. That blue on there, that's just a protective coating, um, but it's not like a sticker. It's like it's uh, dabbed on there or something. So a little bit of alcohol or something and probably wipe right off. I did remove a little bit on the white dial one. This guy weighs in at 73 grams and you have your choice of either this style strap or this style strap which I'm wearing it actually on the white one here, but has this uh, butterfly clasp system. And then both these straps are probably the more inexpensive style straps. I was able to break them in just by manipulating them with my hand and getting them comfortable uh, before I even put them on wrist or anything like that. So break-in period is basically just work them a little bit before you even wear them and then they're good to go. So here's the white one on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. I would easily pick the white dial one. No no uh, surprise there, right? So if we pop this guy off wrist here, you can see I started it with on, on wrist because uh, I struggle a little bit with getting these clasp systems uh, fastened down. So let me wipe this off real quick. So you can see here if we zoom in, you have a nice stark white dial on this. You have the Cobra down below there. Nicely printed on Detroit Mint, Cobra with the red, the red chronograph hand. You have your running seconds over there at the nine o'clock and then you have your other uh, chronograph feature there. If we go ahead and st start that, it has a column wheel chronograph. And instead of having a tachometer on this, it has a hundred scale going around the outside. Supposedly better for timing things, I don't know. I don't really use chronographs. But for you guys that do, maybe that'll make sense to you. You can see a black hour and minute hand with pretty good loom in this. I, I didn't find any information on what loom they're using, but it seems like it's pretty good. So we'll check that out towards the end of the video. There's a little bit of grime on there. Let me get that grime off there, guys. So these, you know what? The black one's going to be easier to look at because I don't have the strap in the way. Um, you know, not the cleanest movements out there for sure, but they they kind of decorate them pretty nice. You know, they're not real blued screws, and uh, I'm not sure even how many jewels are in this one. I'll put a link in the description as well to an article I found on the ST19. The one really cool thing about this is, let's see if I can get some better light here in my little pointer, but if you look over here, so this is how you regulate a watch, right, with this little guy here. And what you have here is a swan neck regulator. See how this 
the gold colored bar here kind of loops around and goes around. That's called a swan neck regulator. So for regulation on this, it's very, very easy to do small, small adjustments instead of having uh, harsh crude movements. So you still have your plus minus there, but when you're doing it, you do it in such small increments and then it moves the swan neck regulator very, very clean and smoothly. So you can, like if you wanted to play around, I mean, he regulates these, but when you're dealing with mechanical movement, you're gonna get some variations depending on how much power reserve you have set on it. But if you wanted to play around with this, you could spin the case back off because you're really not worried about water resistance anyway, guys. So get yourself a little air blower so you can just blow debris out. You can get yourself a case back removal tool. You can take this off and you can adjust this, especially if you have a uh, time grapher, but you can do it other ways too. There's apps up for the phones and everything like that. But if you want to fully geek out and get, get way more intimate with your watch, you can do that. Now, don't fiddle with it and then hit up Dave and be like, hey, is this covered under warranty? No, you open it up, it's yours, right? But these are pretty affordable watches. They're four, like 420, 425, something like that. And there's a look at the black dial one. Of course, I smudged up the crystal a little bit there. Jeez. Everyone tells me to put lotion on my hands. Well, that's what happens. So, there you go. There's the black dial one. Polished handset on this guy. Obvious reasons. But, yeah, I would easily pick the white dial one. That's just me. Uh, but I know some people don't really care for the white dial one. So, you can see this other sub dial here is keeping track of the minutes as they pass but if we go ahead and stop this guy and then we go ahead and push that it snaps them right back into place and if you want to view that from the back side we can do that as well so you can see this lever here when, when you push this crown in here you can see what it does it pivot points here and then it does the work over here you can see what it does See what it did? It pulled that gear away from the center gear. It's still spinning, it just disengaged it from that center wheel, so and then that stops the chronograph hand. And then this one here, if you look, this one's a very quick action, but if you kind of look here, you can see it just, all that did was snap the chronograph hand back to the zero position. Pretty fun to play around with and, and actually watch it in motion. So, oh, here I can put the black one on wrist too for you and then we'll do room shit. I know I went really long on this, but they're kind of fun to look at, guys. There's the black doll one on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Like I said, I'll put a link in the description. Um, Dave did offer to let me keep these watches. So I guess I'll put a paid advertisement up in the screen thing and I'll talk to him some more. This watch he was actually wearing at the time and I'm like, wow, that's really cool looking. Uh, I would love to check that out. And he took it off his wrist and he goes, here, take it. So uh, he was wearing this watch. Uh, the bracelet, you can see it's worn a ton. So I need to get this one back to him. Uh, but, you know, 200 meter water resist, all that stuff, 120 click bezel on this guy. Um, and then a full green. So uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool watch indeed. So check them out. There's other styles of watches on there as well, but the Cobra is the more recent one. So let's kill the lights, check the loom, and then we get this thing rolling here. Let's, so yeah, see what I mean? Like the loom is actually pretty dang good. I mean, it might even be C3. I don't know. It didn't really say, I think, in his webpage, but the loom looks pretty good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next vid.